Hello, world, and welcome back to Kerbal Rocket School. In this episode of Kerbal Rocket School, we will talk about Delta V. This is a pretty tough concept, and I want to explain it thoroughly. So instead of boring you to death with a 15 to 20 minute long lecture, I'm going to be splitting this up into a few separate videos. This makes the project a little less daunting for me to tackle, and I can get the videos out faster. So, Delta V. You might have heard this term being thrown around on the forums or the subreddit or YouTube, and it does seem to be one of the most important things to know that will help you play the game much smarter and more efficiently. But with all this talk, you're left with a lot of questions. What is Delta V? How do I calculate it? What does it mean for my ship? And even if I don't want to calculate it, what are the concepts that it will teach me? Well, let's figure this out. So, here I am playing Civilization V. Well, we all know it's a great game, but you're probably wondering what I'm doing here. Well, let me show you. In Civilization, and a lot of games, all of my units have movement points. These movement points give a numerical value to how far my unit can move. For example, my mech infantry can move three tiles in a turn, but my giant death robot can move five. This changes, of course, depending on what maneuvers my giant death robot has to make. In Kerbal Space Program, your ship has movement points. However, since you can leave a ship in orbit indefinitely without using any fuel, your movement points in KSP doesn't measure how much it can move, but instead measures its range. Every maneuver you make requires a change in speed. To raise your apoapsis, you will need to change your speed at your periapsis. The amount of speed you need to gain for any maneuver is measured in delta V, quite literally, change in velocity. Different maneuvers you make in the game will take different amounts of delta V. For example, it generally takes more delta V to change your inclination than it does to change your altitude. The total amount of delta V you need for a mission depends on a few other factors as well. The Oberth effect, for example. The faster you're currently moving, the more efficient your burn. It's also more efficient to change your inclination at a higher altitude than at a lower one. You can use gravitational slingshots or aerobraking to reduce the amount of delta V you need in a mission, but when taking off from a planet, atmospheric drag and gravity are working against you. There's a lot to keep in mind, so if you want more tips on performing maneuvers, you can check out my other tutorials. Now you're probably wondering, how do I know how much delta V my ship has? Unlike Civilization, you aren't told precisely how far your ship can go. That's for you to figure out yourself, and I can help you. As we figured out in our first Kerbal Rocket School lesson, the force pushing your rocket forward is equal to the mass of the fuel burned times the speed it shot out at. We can use this concept to find out how much speed our rocket can potentially gain. Since we want to know the effect of the force on the craft, we'll divide by the mass of the craft. Let's use this simple final stage as our first example. So, the first thing is the speed the propellant is shot out at, or the effective exhaust velocity, notated as V sub E. This is equal to 9.81 times the engine specific impulse. The specific impulse value for every engine in the game is listed in the VAB and its right-click menu. For the LVT-45 on our rocket, we're given two ISP values, one for atmospheric flight and one for flight in a vacuum. I'll come back to this later, but for now, let's use the vacuum value of 370. Next is the mass of fuel burned and the mass of the rest of the rocket. It would be simple to figure this out if we were talking about one instant, but we're trying to figure out the total potential change in velocity for the entire craft. The problem here is that the more fuel is burned, the lighter the rest of the rocket will be. The rocket will become more and more efficient as the fuel is burned, and will reach a maximum thrust to weight ratio as the last ounce of fuel is used. But, if we know the total mass of the ship with fuel, and the total mass of the ship without fuel, we can relate them to the mass of the fuel burned and the mass of the rest of the rocket for the duration of flight by using the natural log of the initial mass over the final mass. And that's it! That's the delta V formula. Change in velocity is equal to the exhaust velocity times the natural log of the initial mass over the final mass of the rocket. The dry mass of this rocket with the capsule, parachute, decoupler, engine, and the dry mass of the fuel tank is 2.7 tons. The total mass, with fuel included, is 4.7. So our delta V for this rocket is 9.81 times 370 meters per second times the natural log of 4.7 tons over 2.7 tons, which is equal to... 2,012 meters per second. So I've put our test rocket into a circular orbit at 100 kilometers so we can test out our delta V calculation. If we're right, we should be able to accelerate to about 4,200 meters per second. And there you go! We were right. 
This video has covered the basics of delta v. We know what it is, and we know the basics of calculating it. In the next few videos, I'll teach you how to figure out the delta v for more complicated craft, I'll teach you how to figure out how much delta v your rocket needs depending on your mission, and then we'll talk about what we can learn from these concepts even if we don't want to do all the math. That's all for this time, and I will see you out there.